Hallelujah. All of this is for you, Jesus. Well, welcome to Dove Christian Center Church, also known as Dove Church. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for our worship team. We thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for you looking in on us from whatever media outreach uh, you see us on. And for those that are in person in worship service today, we bless you. We thank those that constantly bless us, pray for us, send message for us, and contribute to the ministry. You help us do what God has called us to do, and we thank you for that. And we just bless the Lord for you and ask his continued blessings on you. And with that, we, we fastly move into the word of God for the message of the day. And before we do that, we're just going to just, just celebrate Jesus real quick. Put your hands together, open your mouth. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand or whatever device your Bible is on, repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for the victory that we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we come against everything on assignment to stop us from operating and to moving into the places that you've destined for us to go. So we rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. And claim victory in the areas of pursuit. Help us to think your thoughts. Bring forth your mind in this teaching today. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, we're going to go to our series titled, Jesus Revealed, Lesson 3. Jesus Revealed, Lesson 3. And the title to this Lesson 3 is, Jesus is Healing. Can we all say that together? Jesus is healing. As we've talked about who Jesus is and revealing Jesus, it's been my, my quest to make it more manageable and touchable as it relates to Jesus. So we, we won't have a distant far-reaching concept of who he is and what he does. Amen? Amen. So today, we, we, we just, we could, we could hit on Jesus as, as any number of other things, but healing is such a prevalent thing that we need to talk about because in some way or another, Many of us need healing somewhere. Amen? For something. So, opening with this line, when people contract some physical illness or trouble, what do they look for? It is usually... Someone who can heal. You look for a healer. People come to church looking for a healing. 
They even go to psychologists and psychiatrists looking for healing. So today, we're going to even reframe what you think about healing. And when folk walk in spiritual ways or are Christians... We've been taught and led to believe some things that, about God, that God has, has assigned somewhere. They expect God to be their physician. I know this is going to mess you up. He is not your physician. Wow. That's going to bring a lot of hubbub back. Stay with me. Don't judge it too. You get all the information. Amen. Healing is the will of God. But it is not his operation. It's the will of God. But it's not his operation. It's like God gave you a will. That's God given. God gave you a choice. That's God given. But God does not make the choice for you. That's also God given. That he doesn't take back what he gave you. Is that right? I'm not going to ask how many of us make choices that are outside of God. And you would think immediately that God would, would knock you down. But he doesn't because... It's a choice you made. And every choice has a consequence, an outcome, an outlay somewhere. It's your choice. He gave it to Adam and Eve in the garden. It was their choice. But then something happened because of the choice. Say amen. How many hate some of the choices you've ever made? I'm sorry, that, 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 that was an ouch point. Wow. Let's go a step further. Many people take healing as an object. This is a Bible. This is a glass of water. It's, they are objects. These objects can sometimes be something outside of Christ. Or Jesus. And I'll use them interchangeably. As long as he heals... That we think healing is an object. It is something that's passed to you. Healing is not an object. So we need to explore. What healing is. Everybody say healing. healing. Is not an object. So it's not a handkerchief. It's not a rag. It's not oil. It's not. A blessed penny. It's not even your favorite Evangelist, pastor, or televangelist. Oh.
Turn quickly to Luke 8, 43. Luke 8, 43. I'm not going to be before you real long today, just... I'm not even going to defer to Super Bowl Sunday. I want to let y'all know y'all not getting paid. <laughs> when you have Luke 8:43 say amen. Let's explore healing some more from the, from the perspective of this verse now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years and this is new king james version everybody who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border the King James Version says, touch the hem of his, capital H-I-S being Jesus, garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. Something that had been going on for 12 years, it stopped. When she touched the hem of his garment. Well, over the years, we built songs on just one touch. He touched me. Now symbolically that might be correct. But in actuality it is not what happened. Let's examine the scripture. The truth is did the woman touch Jesus? Jesus was aware that power had gone out of him. Because after she touched him, the King James says, virtue left. Something left out of him. Here comes another questionable statement. What did not happen is that Jesus did not release healing from himself. <laughs> he didn't release healing from himself. It went through his when I said touched him earlier, you were scared to answer. Did she touch Jesus? You, you all say, I, I'm not going to get caught. I think, Pastor, that's a trick question. Yeah. I knew by your look. It's as if some came through the robe and went on her. From Jesus. She was healed immediately. It was a faith operation. Because if you don't believe for what you're reaching after, you won't get it. You have to believe for it. Nobody else can believe for you. Nobody else can place you anywhere. Just like the, the mom who wanted her son to sit on both sides of Jesus. Mama, get back. You, 
You, they're your babies, but you can't do it for them. You'll get frustrated. Especially when them babies get up and walk. With a mind that they own. And you left somewhere hollering, I tried to tell them, I tried to tell them. It was not something he reached in his pocket and got. She was healed. Well, what happened? What happened? That something happened because she was healed. Not the next hour, the next 15 minutes. The Bible says immediately something that was going on with her for 12 years and had exhausted her, her spiritually, mentally, and, 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 and financially stopped. Now maybe you don't want to know what that type of healing is, but I do. Well, here's the answer. It was Jesus himself. See, Jesus does not heal. He is healer. He is healing. And when you engage him, you engage everything that he is. In John's gospel, I gave you seven I am's of Jesus. And then back in Exodus, I talked about a conversation with, 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 uh, with, with Moses where he asked God, really was talking to Jesus, who are you? And he said, I am that I am. What is a I am? It's what I am. Does that make sense? Jesus is healing. So I told people at a funeral yesterday, you must have Jesus. Because Jesus is the GPS of God. He knows the way to heaven. You have to have Jesus. So when you get Jesus, you get the the bread, because Jesus is bread, you get righteousness. You don't get right. He's righteousness. You don't get justice. He's justice. So when you have Jesus, you have justice. You have righteousness. You have the vine. You have the bread. And you have healing. Who is healing? So what happened in this scene? She pulled him to her need. By her faith. He didn't heal her. He became the healed. So he healed her because that's who he is. Because Jesus is healing. And we keep looking for some magic thing to touch us, but we keep looking at an object to facilitate our healing when, when healing is not an object, it's a person. And the person has a personality. And all through scripture, this person has said, I am the God who healeth thee. Here comes another I am. I'm it. So when you have me, you have it. Yes. 
You keep looking for it everywhere else. My God. Did you all get that? Jesus is healing. Jesus is truth. Jesus is the way. And when we say that, we always, I used to always picture what I say. That's one of the seven I am's out of John. When he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I kept thinking that, 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 that Jesus just threw a, a, a concrete down, a pavement down, and he said, I am the way. Really, you thought Jesus made the way. So if I could paint a picture, I would put Jesus on my chest and start walking because I have him on me, in me, so Jesus is the way. So as I'm walking, I'm in the way with Jesus. Does that make better sense? He's the truth. I'm not the truth, but he's the truth. So he makes me truthful. <laughs> See, we keep trying to be something we can't be. The only way we can be it is through who we contain. Who's in us. For the life of you, you can't make yourself right. So he is righteousness. How many know I'm right? The thing we should say is, And write this now, Lord, I want you to be my healing. And I told you earlier that healing has a personality. It is not an object. It is a person. It's Jesus. It's like we used to sing a song. What is this? And for years the Holy Spirit said, I wish they'd call me the Holy Spirit. They'd make me wring my hand. Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. And the Holy Spirit said, it has a name. It's called Holy Spirit. Just say the Holy Spirit. Because it's a person. How would you like it if somebody called you and said, hey, it. Come here. Now if I say, hey, it in this room, would you all know who I was talking about? I'm going to come to this side. It, come here. Nobody move. I'm not going to look at anybody so they think I'm calling them it. It! I'm not talking to you, Julie. <laughs> but if I say Jesus, a person <coughs> manifest. If I say Holy Spirit... If I say, Father, something manifests. Yeah. And the name that gets God's attention in the earth is the name he gave of himself in the world. And it's called Jesus. Yeah. It's not an it. Yeah. And it's not an object. Yeah. Everybody say, it's a person. Are you all getting this today? As long as you think of healing as a thing, you will miss it. This same person becomes my health. Just as he is 
my healing. He is my continuation of feeling good. He's my health. I'm not health, but Jesus is. Did you get that? Our everything is up to Jesus. We can do nothing but wait on him. This is why we cannot look at healing as a thing. Your healing again is a person. My healing has a personality. That personality is Jesus' way of operating with us. How do we find out his personality? Well, what did he do? How did he do? The temptation said, the way you do the things you do. Your personality points to how you operate. If you're lying on your bed of affliction, let's see if you can release the faith. Will you be made whole? It ain't rhetorical. It ain't a philosophical. That's a yes or no question. Yes. With that, well, with that, yes, and that belief, I'm going to become your heel. Now get up, take up your bed, and walk. Because Jesus is healing. Oh, this is messing with us. We, 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 we just shifted paradigms. You cannot. <laughs> the next question is, who is Jesus at the point of my need? I'm only going to deal with two scriptures today. I know Marcus in the gang back there going to fall out. Let's look at something else that's going to twist us up about healing again. This messed me up because, but it's real, it's in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9. Let's, 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 let's leave the woman that got healed immediately because Jesus became her healing he didn't heal her. He became her healing. So, so the blood had to stop flowing. Second, Second Corinthians 12, 7 through 9. When you have it, say amen. amen. And it says there, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. Let's stop there. Sometimes you can have so much revelation or information that you think about God till you don't understand when the operation changes. And you know what our pat answer is? That's not how God works. How do you know? If you want to qualify how God works, you would have to disqualify a whole lot of people. First of all, you would have to disqualify Rahab the harlot. Because God don't work with no harlot. But didn't he decide to send David through the harlot lineage? He don't work with David. He he, he stand on the porch and, 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 and do nasty stuff. He still demands righteousness and holiness. But we have to question ourselves when we determine God's operation. 
Because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Maybe sometime he uses you while he's cleaning you. While he's making you into what he saw you to be. I'm sorry, that's a whole nother message. Let me finish reading. After the comment says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. And Paul is, is brilliant in, 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 in analyze. He said, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. He said, it's not the, it's not the Lord's will. It just came to, 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 to bother me, to take me off focus, to stop me from doing what God had assigned for my life. And sometimes disease entities come to buffet you and stop you from doing the assignment that God has for your life. Come on, come on. So it makes you turn in and not turn to him. So all you think about is being sick. All you think about is being without. All you think about is being under. All you think about is going through. He sent it to buffet you and to stop you from doing what God had called you to do. But Paul said, I understand who sent it. Because it's not God. Are y'all out there? So you have to understand when you're being buffeted. Whoa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, he said, it came to buffet me lest I be exalted above marriage. As if the buffeting is to keep me humble. See, the devil wants you to bow down, but he don't want you to bow down to the Lord. Keep you from being, being, going and doing what God has called you to do. Keep you from being exalted in the things of God. Ah. Because he's scared if you get exalted, you dare going to take God up with you. Because he's the one pulling you up. Come on, come on, come on. Trouble comes to stop you from exalting God by doing what God called you to do. Getting up from your place of sorrow, getting up even in your place of pain and doing what God called you to do in spite of how you've been buffeted. Ooh, he knocking the excuses down today. Because you think you have a right to lay out when you get buffeted. Paul is saying here, I don't feel it. But I know where it came from. Let me go on. Golly, golly, God. I'm just trying to read this verse. And every time I see it, something else open up to me. He said, buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing. Are you seeing that there? I pleaded with the Lord Three times that he might. <laughs> Paul believes it's a satanic something. He said it's a person. A spiritual thing. Well, and this is the part that we act like. We're good with. After he asked God three times to take it away, everybody said, say with me, and he said to me, and he said to me this sounds so sweet and so wonderful. <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect. In weakness. God, what you talking about? I didn't ask for grace. I asked that you. 
This is somebody that needed a healing. It was distraction. It was stopping you from operating. And he said, God, I, he, Paul, he put it real. He wanted you to understand. He said, I'm not telling you I just simply asked, God, God, can you, can you handle this today? He said, no, I begged him. Three begging incidents to take it away. And, and he said to me, oh, y'all act like y'all good with this. You not. You don't want no grace when you in pain. You want to get delivered. And you want, to get it, you want to get delivered like the girl I read about in Luke earlier, the hemorrhage person. You wanted it now. What do you want it and when do you want it? You want it now. So this knocks some stuff in the head that you think about God and how he needs to do his work. This verse set up conflict in a many people, and it did in me. When we are believing for healing. Why? Because we want what ails us to be gone. I got a headache. I don't want grace. I need something for it. My back is hurting. God, I thank you that I have grace, but I really need a painkiller. Come on. Y'all better get on this page with me. You're sitting there like you don't operate that way. Who went to the doctor to get and had an exam and, 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 and you told him some things that were going on and immediately what he did is, is whipped out a little pad and wrote a prescription. That pad also has his, 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 his special Rx number so you all can't keep writing prescriptions. So you, and he, he writes it out, scribbles it out, and then he puts his signature at the bottom, and you present it to the pharmacist. Well, what if God, if your doctor, you, you, you just paid a copay for an office visit, be it whatever your, your level of insurance, 15, 40, 30, whatever it is. And, and when you got there, you didn't look at the prescription. He folded it and handed it to you. But, but, but he, 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 he wrote it out, and, and he said, you know, you know, take this to your pharmacist. I know, I know we're in the day where they call in stuff, but it, same difference if he called it in. And you get to the pharmacist and, and, and they said, you ask, did, did the prescription come? Or, it, or, or you never looked at the prescription in your hand and you, and, and you find out that what he prescribed and he wrote, he wrote grace. How many of you would have a conversation? With CVS. He wrote what? His grace is sufficient for you. You'd be messed up. I don't have to tell you to call me, your doctor, already on speed dial. You just hit one button. That's what God did. Then he said there's the next operational piece. My strength is made perfect in weakness. 
Paul, what a beautiful, rhetorical, theoretical, wonderful thing. My, your strength is made perfect in weakness. And, oh, it sounds flowery and wonderful. What is that? Come on. The truth is, Paul did not receive healing as a thing. But he had the person that was healing, which was Jesus. This Jesus continued to be his healing even in weakness. Wow. The weakness persists, but so does the healing from the one who is healing. So what you thought you couldn't endure with because he is healing. You are able to move with something that is trying to stop you from exalting the name of the Lord. Healing for most people is total elimination of all discomfort. The truth is, healing is not elimination at all. Oh, pastor, give me something to believe for. Do I have a right to get healed immediately? Yes. It's available immediately? Yes. Is it a process of God? Sometimes, yes. Is his strength made perfect in weakness? Yes. That's a part of it too. So what you think is so weak, this method that God operates in, that that Paul is dealing with, it's not the absence of weakness, but it's the presence of power. You have power to maintain and go forward. Watch me knee. The Chinese theologian framed 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9 like this. And I'm almost done. He shared, I took a small boat that was sailing up the Ming River. I noticed that the boat was frequently dragging itself against the bottom of the river across rocks and Whatever things that were down there. Sometimes the boatman had to pull the boat by ropes up the river. And in China, it would be so narrow in places that people would be on the boat. And because they knew the terrain up under the boat where it would be rocks that would be in the place and, and, and it would it, it stop, especially if the water was low. So there were men on the side. This was their job. They would latch on, send it over to the boat, where it, somewhere or another get it onto the boat where they could take it and pull it along the water, bumping along the rocks underneath until it got to A sailing spot that was smoother because there was nothing interfering under the bottom of the boat. You understand that from driving on our pothole streets. I said, this is watch me knee. God, it would be easier for you to move the rocks from the riverbed. This is precisely Paul's prayer. Oh God, would you remove these rocks so the boat can sail through the water unhindered? 
Because all we want is elimination. See, we ask for the object to be healed. But Jesus wishing to, to be himself our healing. We want him to be removed from rocks, but the truth is, he don't have to remove the rocks. He can raise the water. So you can still say along. In your weakness is the presence of power. Jesus is God's everything. And Jesus is healing. Blessings to you today. <clears throat> Father, we thank you and we bless you and we give you glory for what you have shared with us today. And what you have moved into our hearts today. As Jesus is revealed to us over and over again. He is it. And we praise you for it. And we love you today. Jesus, you are everything. And everything is you. Amen. If you heard this message today, We'd love to hear from you. First of all, we want to make sure that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because Jesus not only is our salvation, our Savior, Jesus is salvation. And the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you can repeat this confession and invitation at the same time. And we're going to say it now. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin. And I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, you are salvation. On that confession and with that faith and with this believing, I am saved. I believe that one day you died on a cross. On that third day morning, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God and on that confession and with this faith I am saved in Jesus name if you prayed that prayer even if you were in our listening audience find a good local church to come to we are at 4660 military at the corner of a ratio right off of Livernois Avenue near Michigan Avenue. Come see us. We'd be glad to have us. Look us up, Dove Church. But if you were here in the auditorium today and you prayed that prayer with us and you gave your life to the Lord while we were praying that prayer, lift up your hand if that was you today. Talking to somebody if that was you today. Jesus is salvation. He loves you today. We don't want to embarrass you or make you feel strange. But we will pray with you right after this period is over in service. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord.
to all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.